Hi, welcome to the Getting Started Guide for the Azure AI Proxy. My name is Dave Glover. I'm a cloud advocate based in Sydney, Australia. So getting started with the AI Proxy. So the first thing is you'll need access to deployed Azure AI resources. So for example, an Azure Open AI resource with various model deployments. The next thing you'll need is access to an instance of the AI Proxy. Now the AI Proxy is multi-tenanted. So ask around your organization to see if there's already an instance of the AI proxy running, and you may be able to use that rather than setting up your own. Okay, the next the steps to setting up the proxy is you need to go and create a resource, create an event, need to add resources to an event, and you need to be able to promote the, uh, the event out to attendees. So I'm in Azure AI Studio. And in Azure AI Studio, I've already set up an Azure OpenAI resource. Now, the information I'm going to need when I'm setting up models, I'm going to need the region, and I'm going to need the endpoint and the key of this resource. I'm going to open up this resource, or the OpenAI resource, in a new tab. And the information I'm going to need is information about deployments. So these are our model deployments. And I'm going to need the names of the models that I've created and I'm going to need those names when I set them up inside the proxy. So I'm going to go across to the, um, the proxy admin portal. So I'm going to go across to resources tab. Now you'll notice on each page in the proxy admin portal, there is a link to help. And this will take you to relevant help. So what we're going to do is create a new resource. I'm going to set up a friendly name. In this case, it's GPT-4. More often than not, the friendly name will be the same as the model name. I'm going to set the resource uh, type to chat. Now, the friendly name may differ if you're using load balancing, and you can find more information about that in the docs. Okay, once you've set up the type, you need to go and set up the endpoint, the key, and the region, and activate it. You remember you can get the key point, the endpoint, the key, and the region from Azure AI Studio. Okay, so once I've completed all that, I'd obviously go and click on Save. Now, you'll notice that I've already got three resources that I've set up. Now, what you'll find is that you'll often be creating multiple models within the same OpenAI resource. Now, the quick way to go and set these up is you're going to click on Duplicate. And go and click on Duplicate and just go and change uh, the resource name. So in this case, 16K. 16K, and I'm going to be using the same um, type. I'm going to be using the same endpoint and key and region. It's just a shortcut way of setting up additional resources um, once you get going. Okay, so the next thing you wanted to go and do is set up an event. Create an event. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to set up the event name, um, the event shared code, uh, optional field if you're for users who don't have GitHub accounts. You might want to pro provide a bit of branding on the playground, organize a name, email, the start and end date for the event. That defines the period by which the resources that you're going to apply to this event will be available. Then you come along and set the time zone, in this case Sydney. Then I go and set what's called the max token cap. You're going to find more information about that on the help. And the daily request cap, which basically limits the number of um, requests a user can make via the proxy to the Azure AI resources. For longer running hacks, you might want to get set that to a bigger number, like 5,000. Make it active, and then go and put in some text, and this will be the text that the end user or the attendee sees uh, when they're signing up for the event. When that's all done, you go and click on Save. So you notice I've already got an event set up. I'm going to edit that event, and now you'll see that on the right-hand side, I've got resources. So I'm going to click on the drop-down box, and now I can come along and assign the resources to this event. And I'll click on some white space just to close that drop-down box, update the resources, save that away, and you'll see under the title of the event that those are the resources that are available for this event from during this period, during this time frame. Okay, so now I've set up my event. The next thing I want to go and do is promote this event to my attendees. So you go and click on the attendee link. Now I've already opened that link up uh, in another tab 
and you'll see that here I've got the information about the event, so in this case the title. The attendee will see the event time frame in their time zone, uh, and then there's some instructions in here on how to go and generate an API key. And essentially what you do is you go and log in with your GitHub account, and if you scroll down a bit further, you'll see you've now got registration details. Then as an attendee, what I would do is I go and copy my key, and you can see I can come down to the playground. Now the playground is modeled on the Azure AI Studio playground. And the playground you would use really kind of for prompt engineering, prototyping, experiments, and things like that. So I paste it in my API key, and I authorize. And you'll see that I've now been authorized for the Microsoft Developer AI Learning Hackathon. And then as an end user, as an attendee, I could see that these are the models that have been assigned that I can use um, for the event. I'm going to go back to the, the attendee registration page and just scroll down a bit further. Now, if you're running a longer running, a longer running hack, then developers will almost certainly want SDK access to the AI resources that you're hosting inside Azure that are accessible via the proxy. So there's a bit of information here and a short Python example. But keep in mind that this example is just as applicable if you're using .NET, JavaScript, Java, whatever language you're using for, an, using your, for your SDK. The principles are the same. You're going to need to set the endpoint, which is the proxy, the endpoint for the proxy. And then you will set, in this case, my personal attendee API key. And then below that, you'll just find a simple example there of calling OpenAI uh, the chat completion API. Okay, and if you scroll down a bit further, you'll see some additional examples. So I'm going to go back to the, the, the portal. In fact, I'm going to go back to Azure AI Studio. Just to recap, you go and set up an OpenAI resource. You go and deploy models. You go to the proxy. You go and create resources. Remember, you can duplicate. That'll help you set them up quicker. Create an event. Then you remember, you come along here and you assign resources to an event and you set the date and the, end, the start date and the end date for the, for the event. Remember, there's help. So if you go to home screen, link off the documentation. The thing that I didn't show you uh, is reporting. So you get great reporting within the portal. Select your event. You can track how many people are using the proxy, using your resources. You can see how many, how much, how many resources are being used over time. And you can look at resource usage. How are my models being used? Which ones are being used? And how many requests have been made for them? Thank you very much.